Today on the workbench, I have one of the famous USB zero delay interfaces that are frequently used now to build your own USB controllers for use with things like uh, gaming or potentially things like uh, RetroPie consoles. So let's take a look at the package that I got. You can see over here, there are a couple of things in the box. Firstly, here's the USB cable, USB on this side, and then this proprietary connector on the other side. So we've that there. Wiring harness comes complete as well. On the one hand, it's got connectors straight for this board. And on the other end, it's got um, some smallish uh, terminals that are ready to go. And then we get the board itself. And lastly, we have the instructions. Instructions give us a bit of an overview. Here you can see this is that zero delay USB PC joystick encoder. So let me open up the board so we can take a look at that. So here's the board in the Ziploc bag. And here is the small board uh, itself. So I'm just going to move some of these out of the way. Let's use this box as a stand. And go through some of these things in detail. So on the top left corner, we have our USB interface. And that just plugs in here with that same 4-pin connector that you saw over here. Um, then across the top, we have a connector here for a Sunwire joystick. So you can just have a 5-pin ribbon cable to a corresponding connector just like this on a Sunwire joystick. I don't have a Sunwire joystick, so I won't be using it. In addition, here's the four cardinal directions for the joystick itself. So up, down, left, right, you can see here A, U, A, D, A, R, and A, L. Across the button are all of our, across the bottom, sorry, are all our button switches. So all the way from one through to 12. So you can have actually 12 fire or action buttons. And on the right are four extra buttons, which I won't be using right now. We'll go through those a little bit later. Now, for a lot of custom controllers, of course, you have a sort of a common ground or common wire style setup. This looks like it won't work because it's a bunch of independent wires. But if you flip it over, you'll see there's actually a common rail that does go all the way along the bottom, which then comes back across the switches to individual pins in this uh, glob top here in the middle. Now, this is not a common ground, as people commonly mistakenly call this, because these are not pins, powered pins being grounded, but rather... This is actually a 5 volt rail that goes across the bottom coming straight from the 5 volt to USB input. And it is then basically once the switch is closed, sending a 5 volt signal into each of these various lines into this to go and connect those buttons. So this is 5 volt not ground. Not that it really matters, but it's just interesting. It's the reverse of what people often think. Right, so what am I going to go and put this uh, control interface into? Well, I have an existing controller here. I'm going to put it in front of the camera, which I bought a long time ago uh, back in South Africa. It's called a Hurricane joystick, which is actually a, a shipped product, which came with the South African style joystick and fire buttons common in the arcades there. Interestingly enough, this actual thing is made of uh, MDF, which has been covered here with some kind of a laminate on this side and this rubber around the outside. And then initially this shipped with a PC you know, wired out to a PC 15 pin connector, but I've long since removed that. And you can see here, this is what the inside looks like. And this is actually a leaf, uh, leaf switch joystick. You can see there's four leaves on the right and then leaf buttons as well. Now these buttons actually have toppers, which looks something like this, which clips onto here, which is where those individual leaf springs are. And when you press the buttons, you can see over here, how this goes up and down. And that presses here onto this, uh, leaf, activates the leaf spring directly when the thing is installed. Now I've put a couple of these wires on already that came with this kit, um, just for illustration. But now it's time to actually take this further. Now, I actually want to use this on a, on a RetroPie setup. And having a controller with just four buttons is not going to work that well, because most of these I need for action buttons. But the two things I really need to round off the story really well is a select and start style button for various consoles. So what I've got from eBay, and it's very cheap, and you can see this in their quality, is I bought some of these cheap coin and one player, two player start buttons. And I want to mount them as high up as I can uh, over here. Um, unfortunately, I won't be able to get quite that far. This has quite a broad shoulder on the inside, which I'm going to show you now. So they'll probably sit somewhere like that in order to be able to insert coin or select and then basically start in either arcade games or console games or whatever's being run. So if I flip this back over again, you can see here is that broad shoulder I was talking about. So fundamentally these will be sitting somewhere like this, maybe just either side of where this cable comes in, over here and over here. And you can see the incoming cable is still in between them right through over there and then that's going to go to everything. 
Right, so I'm going to set up some uh, two by fours to make all of this stand a bit more accurately, and then we can start measuring. Here we go. So I have some two by fours and a bit of plastic. Now this all rests a lot better. And these two buttons can go in over here. So the center of the button needs to be about a three quarter inch away from this edge. And here's the center line that the cable comes through and they need to be about a three quarter inch away from that as well. So I'm going to start measuring that now and uh, marking out where I need to drill. There we go, made a nice arc in here with the pencil. Uh, the reason I'm using this, this is actually almost exactly three quarter inch wide. So I can see here, there's my gap from the edge. And now I just need to get to uh, the three quarter inches from this center line over here. So that needs to be there. And similarly, there's that center line, maybe three quarter inches on this side. And that is where my two buttons will go. So I'm going to mark that out with a center punch. And there we go. And then I can start drilling some pilot holes. Right, pilot holes are drilled. Let me clean that up with the vacuum. Right, so the reason I was doing it this way around is because it's very difficult to measure with this beveled edge from the top and the constraint is that inside edge at the bottom. So now I have a, a good guide for where I can drill with my hole saw, but the hole saw I'm definitely going to do from the top down. Now this is a very nice kind of vinyl finish with a bit of texture that's been applied to it for a bit of a wood look, which I don't want to damage. So a good trip tip there is just use a little bit of uh, painter's tape put it over over here and then, then just drill straight through that um, and, and that oftentimes holds everything together and causes a very nice and clean cuts. Now these holes are the standard sort of one and one eighth inch so I'm going to go and grab my one and one eighth inch hole saw and put that in my drill and then I'll start drilling my holes right away. All right, so here's my one and one eighth inch hole saw and I can put this in the pilot holes and let's go for it. MD 
MDF is a bit of a nightmare to drill through. It gets clogs up these bits as you can see and it gets hot and starts to burn. So every now and again you just gotta back out and let it cool down again and clean your bits. Alrighty, so the holes have been drilled. Let's go take a look at the other side and if you remove this tape. There we go, wonderful. So here's where you can see where even though the process was looking very agricultural throughout the cut itself, the cut is actually unbelievably clean. Very, very clean cut. I'm very happy with those. Right, now I can start uh, inserting these buttons. You can see over here they have an extra kind of collar or spacer which we now need. It's going to go straight in. Also, even though these are two uh, made by the same manufacturer, the buttons actually are slightly different from one another, which is interesting. And so the player button is usually a tighter start and it's got a different finish. So on the back, I'm going to go and put the put these nuts in. And tighten them up a bit. Now I need to straighten these also. It's a bit annoying is that the coin button actually turns, um, whereas the one player button does not. So this is the only one I need to orient correctly and it will stay there, which is nice, but this coin button is kind of all over the place and we'll keep changing. There we go. Something like that. Go ahead and tighten these up. I'm going to use my what I would call adjustable pliers, but I believe in America they're called channel locks. Just tighten just a hair. I don't want to strip the plastic, but it's kind of a little difficult to get in there by hand. So I'm just going to give these a little bit of a clamp down. There we go. That should be going nowhere. Now, I'm going to start turning my attention to this USB cable and thread that through here. Now the original joystick, bring this cable in. You can see on the end of this cable, it's got this kind of tension relief, which is useful if you're going to mount this in a regular frame. You can see it's got this big square on the end, which goes inside the case. And then here it's got a snide lip, which you can cut out a nice square and then have that grip. I already have an existing hole that I need to get through and then the original joystick came with this kind of sleeve which fits quite nicely into this hole and I think I want to put that back in there again. So I'm going to see if I can get the cable through that. Um, then I might need to either remove this part you know, or see if I can, I wonder if I can move it. Probably not, it's probably molded into place. I need to see, can I get this controller through here, or this connector? Yeah, it'll be tight, but it'll probably just, just go with a bit of persuasion. Now I'm just going to pop these pins out. Do it the right way on. Black, green, white, and red. Pins are out. Now, oh, where did I put that? Sleeve. Here it is. This can I go through here a lot more easily. Oh, 
I still need to decide what to do with this strain relief. I actually think I'm going to remove some of it just so I can get some of the cable in. It's actually deep inside, but I actually kind of like that. I think that can work. Now I'm going to send that through here. Yes, I really like that. This will go onto the board. I'm going to put a bit of glue gun glue into there. And that should work really well. So now I would like to put the USB connector back on again. So let me start uh, with that. Alrighty, so here's that USB connector and time to wire that all back up again. I recall correctly, first was black, then it was green, then it was white, and finally red. Alrighty. I'll need to mount the circuit board itself. And the easiest will be is to get this close by here to where the USB connector needs to go. It's going to go this way. Let's get around that button like that. So I think I'm going to hot glue that in place and at the same time I'm going to hot glue into this connector over here so that that can be nice and firm. So I think that's going to come out real nice. So now let's move some of these cables uh, out of the way so we can get into there with and let the glue gun heat up. What I might do as well is put a cable tie on here just as something to hold it back from the inside even though I can fold that crevice. This thing is sitting so tightly. I actually think I need to go in here with the hot glue as well. Start from this side, glue this into place. Yeah, I think I'll do that. I seem to, and then finish it off from that side. Okay, so I think the glue gun is warm. I'm gonna go and shove in some glue and let's get to it. Should be plenty. I'm going to go into this opening here and go fold this out. Should work out great as well. And let this glue gun cool down. Alrighty, I think the glue has cooled down a little bit. Now I'm going to start uh, final assembly. So I'll first do USB. Just going to plug that in there. Then I can start assembling these buttons. Now these buttons over here have a couple of parts that go in them. They also have a lamp, which I'm not interested in wiring, but I'll just put it in there anyway. And then we need a micro switch. This micro switch sits 
You can set this way so it presses on this button over here. Now the easier way to get that in is basically to put this inside in over here first. You can see that, and then just kind of swing it in, and then lift it past that piece. Yep, and then it clips into place. So it's in, and it's pressed. Then they just kind of clip in on a little clip rotation basis. There we go, that's the one. And then we do the other one. So first, I'll assemble the light, put the lamp in, which I'm not going to use. I'm going to put this micro switch in so it needs to face down like that. Clip that in first. There we go, that's in. And then install that. So if this one doesn't want to go in here, this one wants to go in here. Perhaps I got these two confused. Yep, the one is broader and the one is narrower. Amazing. But now I think I've twisted my one player. Turn him a little bit cheaper, so it's quite tight. There we go, is that good? It's pretty good. So let me take that broader one. You can see as uh, these buttons look so similar, but they're not. So this is a little bit broader. So let's go and plug that in there. Now this button needs to some it's way too much play here yeah, still in this whole story. No good. Get my channel locks again. Okay. Alrighty. I'm going to add my cabling. Use these same out of box cables and connect them to these uh, micro switches. It doesn't matter which way around they go in this case because that's just a normally open connection, which I'm just closing with these terminals. There we go. There's the one plugged in, and I'll plug in the other one. There we go. And now I'm going to start uh, assembling everything. So I think I'll start with the joysticks again. So let's have a look here. So up is this one over here. And up is there. Okay, and down is this one over here. So that should work really well. So there's the basic installation. Go ahead and close this thing up. And let's screw it back together.
There we go, it is done. Controller is built. Joystick. Go ahead and start. These are micro switch buttons. Or leaf buttons, which I'll be using as A or B, A, X, Y. Well, I guess you can configure this anywhere you want. It's a little bit of a weird configuration here because you can kind of put three hands here and then you, this one, you can't really put your thumb here and put fingers here. This is kind of really awkward. Maybe that's what they were thinking. But anyway, the joystick was this way, so I just kind of went with it. Yeah, so the next step will be to go and plug it in and let's give it a test. All right, and here we have the controller, which you can see over here is plugged into my Raspberry Pi. Um, and here we are currently running RetroPie. Apologize for the handheld uh, footage. I don't have a tripod up here right now. So I'm going to go down, hit my start button. You can see over here my menu comes up. I'm going to go down to configure input. Here we go. Is we sure? Yes. One game detected, hold the button. And there you can see, picks it up. So let's go to the D pad. I'm going to change hands up, down, left, right. Start, select A, B, X, Y. Now those are the only buttons that I have here. So all the rest, I'm just going to hold down a button to jump over. Don't have any thumb sticks, don't have any analog sticks on this controller, so I'm just holding on any button to get all the way to the end. There we go. Also, I do not have a hotkey. I'm going to go by and say, yep, that's me all done. Are you sure you don't want to configure a hotkey? I guess I do because I actually want to use select and start together as my hotkey. So I'm just going to say yes. And we'll shift it back to the main menu. There we go. So I can quit out of that. Let me go and pick a game. Let me go and launch that game. It'll happen below lower left where you won't be able to see it. It's going to pop up a little Dragon Rise gamepad. That's what this thing is. So I can go insert a coin. Let's go insert a coin. There you see it. Credit one. Hit the one play the start button. And there the game begins. Wonderful. So then I'm going to use my controller, pick a planet. There we go, and let's start. And you can see you shoot, jump, and if I point down, here's the buttons over here. Shoot, jump. Yeah. Uh, the controller works absolutely brilliantly. It's just nothing like using arcade controls for the games. So overall, for a basic install, this thing is absolutely highly recommended and works absolutely brilliantly.